Welcome to Starring You. I'm your host, Tasha Johnson. You all are in for a treat today. I have Larry Hunter, who hosts a very successful podcast called 5 Minute Inspirations, a YouTube channel called In Him You Win, and a blog called LarryHunter.org on today's podcast. Welcome, Larry. Well, thank you very much, Tasha. I'm very excited to be here. And uh, gosh, I believe that there's some good stuff that's going to transpire as we're talking back and forth here. Definitely. I agree. I agree. So tell us about yourself. Sure. Okay. Well, first thing I want to mention is that I, that I'm a Christian and I'm in love with Jesus. I just really am in love with him. And that's, that's what I live for, you know, to, to do his will. And uh, I have a heart for missions, world missions. And as a result, my wife and I and our two children, we served as full-time missionaries. We lived in Guatemala for like three years. And then we later on served in Honduras for almost a year. Then after that, you know, we came back to the States and, and my wife and I, we went out again and we moved to Brazil and we served as full-time missionaries in Brazil for like a period of three and a half years or so. And when we returned back from Brazil, I pastored for a little over three years right here in the U.S. And then I felt God's leading to begin traveling in ministry once again. So like right now, I currently travel, you know, throughout the States as well as internationally to speak in churches and and do conferences and stuff like that. And uh, I mentioned to you about my wife. She's, of course, she's a beautiful woman. Her name is Deborah, and she's been, she's a special woman because she's been willing to follow me as I follow God's call upon my life. I mean, this call has taken us into many different nations and among many different cultures and uh, amidst a whole range of living conditions. So <laughs> be able to hang with that, you know. <laughs> And, uh, but any, yeah, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I tell all the time, you special, you know, <laughs> Hallelujah. but anyway, see, and so the Lord has con con commissioned me to bring a very practical and down to earth understanding, of understanding of God's word to, to the nations. So that's really my heart. And, uh, let me see what else I can tell you about myself. We've been into over 12 different countries as it is as to date, you know, and I'm going to be going into Argentina coming up the end of March, and that's going to be the first time ministering there. I got a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology from UNC Chapel Hill, and let me see what else I can say. Oh, also, I'm, I'm a published author, so I, I've written a book, and it's available right now on Amazon, and that book is called Dare to Dream Again. It's Dare to Dream Again, and it's available as an e-book or a paperback, and it's available in English as well as in Spanish, and the book kind of talks about it speaks to everyone who has ever had a dream that never became a reality like they hoped it would. And then I go into personal detail about that experience in my own life and how God picked me back up from my brokenness and he assured me that it was okay to dream again. So Dare to Dream Again, that's, that's available in Amazon, on Amazon. Wow, I cannot wait to read that book. I did not know that. So I, I cannot wait to read that. I'm going to have to add that to my list. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, what inspired you to start your blog and your podcast? Sure. Well, Tasha, what's, what really inspired me to start my blog is I wanted to provide a down-to-earth way of relating to an audience that felt the same longing that I'd felt for practical and biblical wisdom about just how to do life. You know, and it's like to me, blogging represents an awesome way of being able to share ideas pass along as well as receive helpful information and also to connect with others, you know, that share, that share your interests, but to be able to do all of this in a non intimidating way, you know, so that's, that's what's really been inspiring to me about just the whole thing about blogging you know, or doing a podcast. And I'm, I, I must say that initially when I started blogging, you know, my initial attempt was to maintain four blog postings a day, you know, one in English, one in Spanish, one in Portuguese, one in wow. French. Needless to say, that didn't last too long, you know. I got a little bit got to be I was little, thinking that in my head I'm got like to be a little too much. It's <laughs> a very ambitious goal. <laughs> but I mean so I mean I've I've enjoyed <laughs> blogging and podcasting for that reason that we're able to, you know, it's like a community and also we're able to transfer I mean relate ideas and encourage one another. So it's it's all been a blessing to me. Definitely, definitely. Now, guys, if you have not heard Five Minute Inspirations, <laughs> I don't know where you guys have been hiding. Seriously, like that is actually how I start my day is listening to your podcast. And 
you are a fantastic storyteller. How do you come up with the ideas for your podcast? And your <laughs> well, that's a good question. It's an easy answer, though, Tasha. Uh, my answer would be the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, I, and I say that okay, in a okay. sense, that's fair I enough. mean, he is so creative. <laughs> so it's like when I'm, when I'm reading the Word of God or when I'm, you know, praying, whatever I'm doing, when, when the Lord opens my understanding to something, maybe a truth or a principle from his Word that I didn't quite understand before, it's like, I'm like a kid with a lollipop. I instantly want to tell somebody else. Wow, I never understood that before. I understand it. I want to tell somebody else. And so what happens is, you know, sometimes he'll already give me some type of parallel, you know, with my everyday life that I can relate, relate it to. If he doesn't, I'll ask him. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, Lord, okay, how can I relate this? What is something that we all are very familiar with that we experience every day that I can take and then tie it to this truth so that we can understand this truth better. And that's what he does. He'll give me something. A lot of times it's kind of crazy, but I'll go with it, you know. And uh, it's even like many times when I wake up in the morning, it's like he'll have something that he's, all of a sudden I understand something from the word that I never understood before. And right along with it, he'll give me an example from everyday life that I can easily relate to. And then I can't wait to pass it on to others, you know. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. So there's, now, and you know, there's so much negativity in the world. Mm, you're right. right? Yeah, a lot mm -hmm. going on. There's so much going on. So, how do you stay positive? Wow, how do I stay positive in a negative world? There's two things really that I that I that I do. The first thing that I do, I have over the years become very selective about where I give my attention, and of how much attention I give. You know, to to there's so many voices out there in the world. There's so many ideas, so many opinions, so much is happening. So I've become very selective about where I give my attention to. And then I'm not to say that I'm going through life with blinders on, but also if there's something that's negative or whatever, I'm very attentive to how much time I'm going to give that in my mind. You know, you know how uh, at the airport they have a little cage. Well, I mean, you know, some airports probably more advanced than this, but they have a little cage that's kind of like somewhere available where you get ready to check in and everything. And it says, if your bag can fit into this little cage, then you can carry it on. All right. So basically <laughs> yes. you might have the prettiest bag in the world. You know, you just got it. You got a good sale on it and everything. But if that bag does not fit in that cage, then there's a pretty good possibility that they're going to stop you short and tell you that you have to check that bag as opposed to taking it on the plane. Okay. So now in the same way, I've learned to let God's written word be the cage that I do life through. So see, I, I look at what God's word says, and then I measure the reports that I hear from day to day, you know, what somebody might say or, or what something might look like. I measure it all against that cage. Or in other words, what does God's word say about it? And if, if I hear a witness, something that does not agree with what God's word has declared, I do not permit it to take up, a prolonged residence in my thought life. So those, th those are two things that help me to stay positive when it seems like such negativity is like all around us. Oh my goodness. I love that analogy. I mean, you are seriously dropping some gems and I'm just going to pick them <laughs> you all pick up. Pick them up. Do what you want with them. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> I am going to do so much with those gems. <laughs> So tell me, what accomplishment are you most proud of? Hmm, good question. Well, um, I would say accomplishment that I'm most proud of, it would, it would probably be that I have, by God's grace, been able to positively impact the lives of people across four language groups and 12 countries, you know, with God's word. You know, it's like I remember years ago, I mean, this is years ago I used to pray, and I used to see through the eye of faith and then make this declaration in my prayer time that I have friends. I would say this. I said, I thank you, Lord, that I have friends all around the world that willingly receive me into their homes and regard me as a much beloved family member whenever I'm in their area. I used to say that. I used to see it through the eye of faith. You know, you know that as you spend time in the word of God, he calls you the dream. He gives you, ooh, you just, you just see things that you see possibilities. So I would say that all the time. Oh, yeah. And I can, I can tell you today that that has surely become a reality. Whether I'm in Mexico, whether I'm in Brazil, whether I'm in Ethiopia, it doesn't matter. Whenever I go into the area, 
there are people there that receive me and they just care for me and family. So that's the thing that, that I'm wow. proud of, that God has given me the opportunity to, to influence people across so many languages and countries. That's fantastic. That that's 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 fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Man. Um so what's the best piece of advice that you have ever received? The best piece of advice that I've ever received someone told someone said it a number of years ago. I forgot what the setting was. I might have might have been when I was in Bible school. The person told me that preparation time is never wasted time. Or preparation time is never wasted time or lost time. Okay. And, and and see that was good for me to hear back in those days because it wasn't a whole lot wasn't a whole lot of people calling for me and you know we want to hear what you got to say brother Hunter no none of that going on right those were the preparation days <laughs> so preparation time is never a wasted time because one day your prep prepare how you say it your preparedness will meet your opportunity <laughs> that's a tongue twister huh. <laughs> That is a tongue twister. I, hey, I wasn't trying to laugh at you because I was like, mm, I couldn't say that myself. So I mean, I, I mean that. So that's that that bit of advice right there. Preparation time is never wasted time. That really helped me because it's like no matter what's going on, what it seems like, you know, whether you seem like you're being received well or not, you keep working on you. And it's like when I began to pursue the dream of one day preaching in Spanish. I remember this. I began to have a. I had a dream. One day I'm going to be able to preach in Spanish and without having to have an interpreter. Well, back when I was dreaming about that, wasn't nobody looking for me. Nobody ever even heard of me, you know. They wouldn't ask me to come preach for, <laughs> preach for them or anything like that. But the day came, however, that I was called upon to give a three-hour – this is when we moved to Guatemala. We first got there. I was called upon to give a three-hour class to a group of hungry Bible school students there in Guatemala. And, of course – they spoke Spanish, but I was able to step up into that assignment and be effective because I had spent that time when there were no doors of opportunity open for me. I spent that time in preparation. So that's the advice I would give. Just preparation time is never wow. wasted time. I agree. That That is some, that's some very good advice. I hope you guys are taking that <laughs> to heart because he is absolutely right on that. I've been preparing I, I've got some dreams mm. out there myself that I've been really trying to work on. And actually, it's so funny you mentioned the Spanish because I've been studying Spanish for, uh, I'm almost a little <laughs> embarrassed, but off yeah. and on. But, <laughs> but yeah, I know it's going to play a role mm -hmm. in some of my dreams as well. So I'm so glad wow, that you mentioned awesome. that. So, <laughs> yep. So what's one of the most interesting things that has happened to you during during one of your missionary trips? Oh Lord. <laughs> you think anything interesting happens on the mission field? I'm sure you have stories. <laughs> I'm like scanning the files in my mind. <laughs> Which one am I gonna pick? <laughs> okay, I think I'll I'll tell I'll tell about this one, okay? Um one thing okay. that's pretty common in, in third world countries is that you can't really depend on the electricity to stay on. I mean, it might come on, might go off, and when it goes off, it might might be off for days, and it's just kind of like a way of life. You don't take that for granted at all. And a whole other story, you don't take for granted that you're going to have bright light, you know, where you can actually read a book or something under the light. Man, it just don't happen like that, like it happens around here. But anyway, okay, so I was invited to, to speak at this church in Nicaragua, Managua, Nicaragua, and I arrived there, and my friend, you know, pastor friend of mine that I've known for years, he said, okay, yeah, look, we, we're running a little bit late. We better hurry up, you know. So we got out there, and, of course, there's traffic. And, and as you might remember from a podcast I did recently, all kind of stuff out in the road. So you can't go too fast. You got everything yeah. trying to get down the road. <laughs> Hallelujah. So needless to say, we got there late. It was just about – it was just getting dark when we got there. So we got to the church. It wasn't a big church at all. It was kind of – well, it was it, – you wouldn't know it was a church if you saw it from the road. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that it was a church in there. Mm -hmm. But we got there. And someone met me at the door. It was kind of dark when we drove up. And, and one of the ushers came out. Oh, it's so nice to see you, Brother Larry. So much, so nice to see you here. And he said, everybody's ready. And I could hear the songs going on in there. It sounded like he was full. You know, full probably means probably about uh, maybe 100 people. Okay. So, but what happened is that a few minutes before we drove up, the power went out. <laughs> you know, so there's no electricity. Oh. And... 
as it was, the church was borrowing electricity. You know, they had something all rigged up so that a neighbor was allowing the church to be able to have electricity. You know, so, but all that kind of failed, and the whole area is without power. So, as soon as I stepped inside, you know, the back door, somebody grabbed my hand. And my Larry, the name was oh, brother Larry, we got to hurry up because this is the last song. And so, somebody grabs me by the hand and rushes me up to the front. It's pitch black in there. Can't see nothing. <laughs> and so I'm up at the pulpit, and he, I guess he's still beside me. And then, you know, he said they've concluded the song, and then he, and now we have visiting us from the United States of America, who's going to bring a powerful word of God, Larry Hunter. And everybody's kind of clapping and stuff. And, and I get up there, and I can't see nobody. I can't see the faces. I can't see anything at all. <laughs> Lord, so what do you do? I started, you know, it didn't make sense to open my Bible. <laughs> it wasn't in Braille. I couldn't couldn't see my Bible. <laughs> so I went ahead and started preaching. And, uh, boy, I was carrying on. And I was like, I really wish I knew. I don't know whether there's 10 people here or 200. I just can't tell. It was really messing with me so bad. And as I was preaching, I was laying out my points and everything. I was doing pretty good because I had my message on the inside of me. So I didn't need to refer to a Bible. And so then I said, you know what we're going to do? I really want to bring this point home to you. And, and, you know, I heard somebody say, gay hey, or what? I said, you know what? I have my camera with me. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, when I count the three, I want you to give me the biggest smile that you have, and I'm going to take your picture. Glory to God. So, you know, I counted the three. Uno, dos, tres. And I took my camera, and I took a picture of them. But when it took the whole strategy behind it, take the picture, the flash goes off, that gives me an idea of my surroundings. I can tell who's here. Okay? <laughs> so, so it worked out great. So I took that. They don't even know that's why I did it. I took the picture and, okay, so now I see what I'm working with here. <laughs> and I went on and oh complete, I completed God. the message and everything. And it worked very well. And we had some praise songs afterwards. The electricity never did come back on. Afterwards, we all went outside and I began to kind of meet people and talk a little bit. But that's just one of like, a thousand stories I could tell you, but you just have to be flexible on the mission field. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, that sounds like this. You, you probably full of stories that could be another book. <laughs> oh, Lord. The name. I want to see some of these stories in a book. <laughs> okay. That's an idea. I might do that. <laughs> that I'm telling you, that would be just as interesting, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you've traveled all over the place, right? So if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Hmm. Wow, you got some good questions, Tasha. Let me tell you that. Let me see here if I can go oh, anywhere in the world. <laughs> I think that actually I would want to travel to Madagascar. Madagascar is an island in uh, off of the coast of Africa, and it's not a very large island. And the reason being mm -hmm. that, you know, I put out Facebook Live videos, and I do them in English, and I do them in Spanish, and I think I've done one or two in Portuguese. And one time as I put one out, I think I, I put it out in Spanish, I received a comment from somebody, and they said they were explaining how that, wow, they wished that they could understand what I was saying very well. You know, in, in Madagascar, they speak French, and they speak their own native tongue, which is Mal Malagasy. So this person was, you know, in a few words, but said basically, gosh, I wish that we as Christians had this quality of teaching in our land we just don't have it we want it but we just don't have it and that just really touched my heart you know madagascar is a few minutes away from here i understand that right but uh it really just sure. touched my heart that there's somebody who's it's kind of like paul when paul had that vision of the macedonian dude saying look come over here and help us that's kind of how i feel and so if i could go anywhere in the world i'd go to madagascar and i would give them that word that they've been hungry for Wow, that that's awesome. I, and I have to be honest, I I don't think too many people would have picked that. <laughs> but I, I should say Hawaii, Hawaii. I, it's so funny. I know, but I, but I think that. But see, that's one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to your podcast because you're definitely an out of the box thinker, and you really have a lot of good content to help inspire and motivate people to, you know, don't just subscribe to what other people are doing right look yeah. into the word mm. and figure out what you're supposed to be doing mm. in your life so no you're you no, you are doing exactly what i'm thinking <laughs> anyway but 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. So, you know what? You've again, you've traveled quite a bit. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing that you do when you get home from a trip? Eat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. No, I'm just playing. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not too far from the truth, but I mean, when you finally can get home and get some regular food, so, so to speak, regular food, mm -hmm. then that's a blessing. But no, really, actually, it sounds kind of quirky, but normally the first thing that I do when I get home is I unpack everything and put it away and you know, everything that I took with me. Oh, my goodness, I'm the same. <laughs> I unpack it. <laughs> it's somehow that kind of, until I have everything unpacked and put in place, I don't really feel like I'm back yet. So once I get everything in place and set up, I feel like now I'm I'm back. I'm really back home. And oh, also an, okay. another thing that I do. I love that. Another thing that I do <laughs> is I go to the bathroom to look at myself in the mirror. Why? Because in the places that we go into, there are either no mirror, no real mirrors available, or the lighting is so poor that it makes it very difficult to see if there's anything on your face that you need that deserves attention. I mean, so so oh, you wow. can go a whole couple of weeks without having never really seen yourself in the mirror. And so, yeah, that's one of the things that when I get back, one of the first things I do, go in the bathroom, cut on the bathroom light, and finally I got light that's bright enough that I can see myself and, you know, and see what's been going on for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I never, I never would have thought about that, but you're absolutely right. You're right about that. And by the way, I, I'm so glad that you also unpacked because I have shared that with other people who thought I was insane. They're like, why wouldn't you relax or anything? But that that's is, exactly how that's I relaxing until, yes, until I unpack, I'm such a neat freak. So until I unpack, I <laughs> still don't really feel comfortable because I know that there's clothes sitting in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just love the fact that you said that. So whatever. I'm not crazy, people. <laughs> Other people do this. Uh, that's just two crazy people, huh? I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so tell me, what is a talent that most people aren't aware that you possess? Hmm. Um, I would say, well, I play drums. I play drums, and I also play the keyboard. Oh, wow. And so I'm pretty, I mean, I'm pretty musical. And I don't really, well, since I've been very busy in my ministry schedule and stuff like that, I hadn't really had too much of a chance to, you know, play drums or, or play the keyboard for that matter. But that's something that, you know, it's in there. And it's like, for example, I can get to a set of drums and hadn't played in two years, but it's amazing how it'll come out. Brrr, you know, it, it'll come out just like I had I, the last time I played was yesterday. So that's something I don't think many people know. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, that's very cool. So when sh when is your album going to drop? Yeah. Okay. I'll <laughs> let you know. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Soon and very soon. No. <laughs> hey, you never know. I know. You never know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm -mm. So what piece of advice do you have for aspiring bloggers? For aspiring bloggers, my advice would be don't be too afraid to get started. I mean, I would really say that because... I mean, there's there's a mentality that it has to be perfect right out of the gate. And I don't think that's even fair to someone who's contemplating starting a blog because you're not at a place yet where you can produce the perfection that you think should be there because there are things that you need to learn and that you won't learn until you get into the process. It's kind of like riding a bike. I mean, you can talk to somebody all day about how to ride a bike. You can give them three or four books to read, but there's certain things that they're not going to learn until they get on the bike and they start pedaling. And then, then the, those little gaps of knowledge that are necessary are filled in. So my, my advice would be, yeah, don't be too afraid to begin. Start now. And I like to think of it this way. There's somebody out there who is searching for the very blog post that is within you and that you have yet to write. So that's what I would say. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. and, and Oh, my goodness, I like that. That is so true. Yep. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed all the gems that Larry has been dropping today. <laughs> Larry, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to share your blog with us. I truly do appreciate it. Well, you are certainly welcome. I appreciate being on the show. Huge thanks to those who are listening to today's show. 
You can connect with other bloggers and entrepreneurs by joining our free Facebook group called Goal Slayers. If you enjoy this podcast, please be sure to share it with others by writing a comment on Anchor or YouTube or writing a review on iTunes or Google Play so others can discover this show as well. Remember, if you're everything to everyone, then you risk being no one. Creating your blog is the first step to investing in yourself and allows you the ability to connect with other people. You never know who you may inspire. See you in the next podcast.